Proudly, we hail. the American stage begins. Here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. entitled A Week of Sundays. This is the story of seven days in the life of one of those men whose first duty is to serve, as proudly we hail the chaplains of the United States Air Force. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... Young man, if you're a high school graduate, unmarried and otherwise qualified, there's a future for you as an aviation cadet in the United States Air Force you'll receive a year of the world's finest flying training. Graduate as a second lieutenant, earning more than $5,000 a year. Here's the opportunity of a lifetime to serve your country and build a career that will fit you for responsible positions in both military and commercial aviation. Visit your nearest Air Force base or your nearest Air Force recruiting station for complete details. And now your Air Force presents the Proudly We Hail production a week of Sundays. In a Midwestern town, a group of men and women are gathered together in a meeting room in their town hall building. Their minds are on the newly activated Air Force Base, located 10 miles from the city line. And as mayor of this town, I thought it would establish a firm foundation for mutual understanding if we... Got to know a little bit more about how the Air Force operates. So tonight we have with us a man who will be able to explain to us the moral and spiritual work of our Air Force. So without further ado, I'm glad to present Chaplain James Andrews. I, I had come prepared to make a speech tonight. But since this is a forum, I think... I'll take a chair here and just talk to you as friends. I believe that you know pretty much of what a chaplain represents. <coughs> but I think you'll be able to get a better idea of what he does if I were to describe one of my typical weeks. The week just passed and some of the things that happened. Well, let's take last Monday morning. Well, that's when I usually make out my reports on attendance and consultations and so on. I had just barely started on them when M. and Johnson, my assistant. Chaplain Andrews, uh, fatigue detail has arrived. Oh, send him in, M. and Johnson. All right, you can go in. Good morning. Hello, sir. What's your name, son? Uh, Airman Skinner, Chaplain. Oh, glad to meet you, Airman Skinner. We don't have too much for you to do this morning. Just a bit of piloting a lawnmower around the chapel lawn. Yes, sir. Ever have any experience at it? Oh, sure. I used to do it all the time at home. Good. Alan Johnson will give you the lawnmower. You, you don't have to rush. Just take your time, okay? Okay. Oh, uh, what's that? Uh, sure, sure, that's okay. Is something the matter? No, no, I, I was just thinking of something. No, nothing's the matter. You want me to start now? Yes, that's right. Are you sure there's nothing wrong? No, there's nothing wrong, Chaplain, except me. What do you mean, son? You'll probably get a big kick out of it. I'm a real sad sack, I guess, but believe it or not, I'm still homesick. I see. It's a laugh, isn't it? I can't help it. I've tried my darndest, but it's no use. I understand. Well, I better get busy on that lawn. I'll get over it. That afternoon, I spent looking up M. and Skinner's records and talking to his officers and squadron mates. 
By the time evening came, I had a fairly comprehensive idea of what was at the root of his homesickness and how it might be cured. After chow, I dropped around to his barracks and found him sitting on his bunk as I expected I would. Hello, Chaplain. What are you doing here? Oh, just passing by. I thought I'd drop in to say hello. I see you're catching up on your correspondence. Yes, sir. I write a letter home to the folks every night. Every night, eh? That's right. A long one, too. Each letter runs about ten pages. Oh, it must keep you busy. Oh, right up the taps. It seems to me it keeps your folks busy answering all of them. <laughs> yeah, I guess it does. Mom says one letter a week would be plenty, but not for me. <laughs> Say, Skinner, I, I found out you've done a bit of singing. Oh, sure. Sure, I was president of our school glee club back home. Well, in that case, I wonder if you'd do something for me. I'll be glad to, Chaplain. I've been thinking of starting a singing group here on the base. Do you think you could scout around for me and see if anyone would be interested in joining up? Well, I suppose I could, but I don't... Fine. I'll drop in one day and let me know how you're making out. Okay, Chaplain. I'll run along now. So long, Skinner. So long, Chaplain. And don't forget, if you ever need your lawn mowed again, I'm your man. for Tuesday. Tuesday morning, I was busy checking the list of classical recordings we would need for the chapel's music library when... Chaplain Andrews, there's a lady to see you. A lady? Uh, Mrs. Wallace. Well, have her come in, Ammon Johnson. Right this way, Mrs. Wallace. Thank you. Sit down, please. Thank you, Chaplain. Now, may I help you? I don't know if you can do anything, but I just had to see somebody. Is there something wrong? Yes, but I, I don't know if I should even have come here. My door is open to everybody. It's not that. It's my husband, Joe. He's got it in his head that I shouldn't go see anybody about it. Well, about what, Mrs. Wallace? Well, I'm going to have a baby. And... You aren't happy about it? Oh, no, Chaplain. Joe and I are both very happy. It's our first one, and we're both looking forward to it. It's nothing like that. It's... Chaplain, promise me you won't tell Joe that I was here to see you. Now, Mrs. Wallace... I'd like to promise you, but I don't know anything about what's troubling you. Why don't you just tell me? And then we'll decide what should be done. All right? If you think that's best. It's like this, Chaplain. Joe's a crew chief in the 116th Squadron. Reconnaissance, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. And the squadron is due to take off on a training mission. They'll be out of the country for four weeks. They're due to leave this Saturday. I see. And you're expecting your baby during that time? Yes. And I want Joe to be here when it comes. I, wa I want him to be. I see. It isn't that I'm afraid, Chaplain. It's that, that I'm all alone. My mother lives in California, and she won't be able to come. And I, I just can't bear the thought of having it with Joe off someplace. Of course, Mrs. Wallace. And I asked Joe to go to his group commander and request to be taken off the flight. But he won't do it. Uh, don't get me wrong, Chaplain. Joe isn't hard-hearted. He, he just doesn't want to be let off the mission. But he feels bad about it, too. What was it you wanted me to do, Mrs. Wallace? I did want to ask you to go to the group commander and ask him to have Joe taken off, but I guess I was just being selfish. Well, anyway, I've talked to somebody about it. Well, Mrs. Waltall, my own feeling is that a husband should be by his wife's side to see the miracle of his child being born. Now... I'm going to try to do something, but I can't promise you anything. Don't be disappointed if I'm not successful. Oh, I won't be, Chaplain Andrews, I promise. Good. I'll have Ammon Johnson give you a lift to your quarters. Thank you, Chaplain. Thanks for everything. After Mrs. Wallace left, I dropped around to the dispensary and had a talk with a medical officer who was treating her. I learned from him that she was in excellent physical condition and would in all probability have no trouble in giving birth to her child. From there, I went to her husband's group commander, Colonel Hodge, and told him the facts in the case. He was quite sympathetic, but he informed me the mission had great importance and it was necessary that it be carried out with the present personnel. In addition, Sergeant Wallace had not requested relief, so there was little the colonel felt he could do. When I left his office Tuesday evening, I was beginning to think there was little I could do either. But as it turned out, on the next day, Wednesday, I wasn't able to give it much thought. 
Anne and Johnson and I arrived at the hospital early Wednesday morning and started our journey through the wards. We visited with the patients at their bedside, offering spiritual comfort where it was needed and generally trying to cheer them up. About 10 o'clock, as I was passing down the corridor from one ward to another, an airman approached. Uh, excuse me, Chaplain. Could I speak to you a moment? Uh, certainly, Sergeant. My name's Gordon, 13th Squadron. Oh, glad to meet you, Sergeant Gordon. What can I do for you? Uh, nothing for me, Chaplain. It's for a buddy of mine, Airman Jim Atwell. He's a patient here, and, uh... Well, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> Why not? Well, it's like this. You see, I'm not much of a religious guy myself. I don't belong to any church. I, I don't know whether it's fit for me to ask you. The Church of God embraces all... Go right ahead. Uh, Jim's got pneumonia. I'm pretty bad, and the thing about it that worries me is that he feels depressed. Depressed? Why? Well, when he came in here and found out what was the matter with him, he sent a letter to his dad in California, but he didn't get any answer from him at all. And since then, Jim's been brooding about it, and, well, what with the fever, it isn't helping him any. I see. And I thought, well, maybe you could sort of encourage him a little. Well, I'll certainly try, but first I think I'd better talk with you. Yes, Chaplain, we tried to reach his father, but, well, till now we haven't had much luck. I see. And you say Atwell will reach the crisis tonight sometime, perhaps. But it may come sooner, can't tell you. Doctor, I'd like to talk with him if I may, but before I do, let's try once more to reach his father. May I use your phone? Oh, go right ahead. Here's his address. Operator. Will you get me person to person, Mr. Harry Atwell, 122 Maple Street, Los Angeles, California. Uh, thank you. Uh, doctor, what are his chances of pulling through? Oh, 50-50. But when a patient has inner trouble, it's a lot harder to cure his outer trouble. Yes. Now, oh, they're ringing now. Hmm. Hello? Hello, Mr. Atwell? Oh, this is Chaplain Andrews. Oh, Yes. Uh, you've just read the letter from Jim? Uh, I see. Yes, yes, of course. But just hang on a minute, will you? He's been on a two weeks vacation in Canada where he was isolated from all communications. He, he just got home half an hour ago and, and got the message. He's, he's making plans to fly here immediately. Oh, that's great. Think you'll make it in time, Doctor? No, it's hard to say. I have an idea. Will you arrange to have a phone extension set up in Atwell's room? Why, sure. What are you going to do, Chaplain? We'll let him talk with his father. That's the best medicine I can think of right now. I'll see to it right away. I'll be back in a minute. All set, Doctor? I'm sorry, Chaplain. What's the matter? Well, the phone won't do any good. He's delirious. Oh. Hello, Miss Atwell? Sorry to have kept you waiting, but... Well, I can only advise you to hurry here as fast as possible. Yes, yes. Well, that's quite all right. Goodbye. Doctor, I'd like to see Atwell now. Oh, of course. Sergeant Gordon, will you show the chaplain to his room? Yes, sir. But there isn't much you can do now, is there, chaplain? Well, there's a lot that can be done, Sergeant. A lot that can be done with prayer. Listening to the Proudly We Hail production, A Week of Sundays. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Aircraft observers are now being trained by the United States Air Force for crew positions in the world's mightiest bombers, the B-36, B-47, and the B-52. Can you qualify? Well, if you're between 19 and 26 and a half, single, and a high school graduate, see your aviation cadet project officer at the nearest United States Air Force recruiting station today. Wear the silver wings of your United States Air Force. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of A Week of Sundays. Chaplain, much worse. 
Jim? It's Bob, Jim. Bob Gordon. You're going to be okay. Hey, your dad's coming to see you, Jim. Jim? He doesn't hear you, Sergeant. There's only one voice he can hear now. One voice? Oh, yeah. I guess so. I hope so. For the next half hour, we sat beside Airman Atwell. Sergeant Gordon, sitting at one side of the bed, curiously watching me while I silently prayed. About 11.30, the doctor came in. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Chaplain, but I've got to stand by now. I understand, Doctor, but I've done all I can. I must get along now to conduct my services. Very well. Chaplain. Yes, Sergeant Gordon. Do you think... It's out of our hands now. Yeah. Thanks, Chaplain. Thanks. I made my way to the hospital chapel to conduct a brief service. When I had finished, since it was about 12.30, I decided I'd better get some lunch before I tackled my afternoon schedule. But as I was leaving the chapel, I saw something. In the far corner, in the last pew, I saw an airman kneeling, his head bowed. It was Sergeant Gordon. Although the rest of my day was a busy one, I thought often of Sergeant Gordon and his friend, Airman Atwell, and I made up my mind to drop by the hospital after my class in religion was over in the evening. But I didn't have to go to the hospital, but just as I was preparing to begin my class, Sergeant Gordon entered my office. Chaplain, looks like I'm interrupting something. Oh, not at all. I'm just about to begin my class in religious instruction, but I have a few minutes. How is that, Will? Well, that's what I came about. His dad arrived a short while ago. Jim got through his crisis okay. Doc says he's going to recover. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, he was almost a goner there for a while. It hadn't been for, uh, well, a lot of things. Yes, Sergeant. I... I think I told you I never had much to do with religion, but well, after what happened today, I've done some thinking, and would you mind very much if I sort of hung around while you had your class tonight? Sergeant Gordon, of course not. I'll be happy to have you. Very happy. I can assure you that was one of the most satisfying classes I ever had. Now for Thursday. Chaplain Andrews, I've checked up on the PA system and it works fine. Fine. After lunch, I'm having a meeting with the ladies' aid committee. Where? In the recreation room across from the chapel. And I'd like you to set up the slide projector. I've got some slides I want to show them. Here. Want to take a look? Say, these are pretty good. Where'd you get them, sir? I had them made from photographs I took while I was in Korea. And I think they should prove... Interesting to you, especially since we are about to launch this drive for clothing for the children there. Now, I know some of you have been to the Far East, but I doubt if any of you have been in Korea. So I believe that some of the pictures you will see now will demonstrate the importance of what you are about to do. Now, Emma Johnson, the first slide, please. Yes, sir. Now, this slide is from a photograph I made on a road leading to Seoul. As you can see, this little boy is no more than six years old. And when I came across him, he'd been separated from his parents for three days during the refugees' exodus from North Korea. It was the middle of winter. Those, those little feet of his were wrapped in a thin cotton rag. The next slide, please. Now, now this is a picture of Kim Yu Wang two weeks later in an orphanage. Maintained partially by members of our faith in Seoul. He looks a lot different now, doesn't he? <laughs> there are thousands of orphans that still cannot be taken care of sufficiently. And there is a great need for clothes and food. And that's where you come in. For the next half hour, I showed my slides. And when the meeting was finished, I felt our new project was off to a good start. And by the time Emma Johnson and I had packed our equipment, the ladies had all gone. All that is except one. 
Hello, Chaplain Andrews. Why, Mrs. Wallace. <laughs> I didn't know you were a member of the Ladies' Aid Committee. I'm not. They told me at your office that I could find you here. Have you been here long? About half an hour. Oh, that's too bad. I wish you would have called me first. I was going to, but now I'm glad I didn't. Since I talked to you last Monday, I've been pretty much down in the dumps. My nerves were on edge. I, I just didn't know which way to turn. I tried to do something for you, Mrs. Wallace. I, I talked to your husband's group commander, but he was unable to relieve him from the training mission, especially since he didn't request it. I know. Colonel Hodge phoned me and told me he was sorry about it. I also talked to Red Cross headquarters today, but they're going to see that you're well taken care of after the baby arrives. There'll be a Red Cross volunteer aide who will be there to help you with your housework. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm just sorry I couldn't do more. What chaplain you have? I have? How? Well, when, when I came to see you, I, I really didn't know what for, unless it was to cry on your shoulder. I know. Well, anyway, I'm all right now. I'll get through, even if Joe isn't here. Well, of course you will. Those four weeks will fly around fast. When's Joe leaving? Saturday afternoon. I'll drop by then. I'd like to have a little talk with him before he goes. I did drop around Saturday, but it was under much different circumstances than I had anticipated. <laughs> but I'm getting a little ahead of my story. There's still Friday I have to account for. That's the day I try to keep open as much as possible for private study for figuring out a theme to use for my Sunday sermon. But last Friday afternoon, Ammon Johnson entered. Chaplain, I hate to disturb you, but there's a bunch of fellas outside. Said they were to report here this afternoon. Oh, that's strange. I, I don't have anything scheduled. What do they want? I don't know, and I think they don't either. <laughs> well, I'd better see them. Where are they? Out on the lawn. Oh. Oh, Ammon, Ammon Johnson tells me you were to report here to me, but I, I don't... Chaplain, Chaplain, Chaplain Andrews. Well, Ammon Skinner. I'm sorry I got here so late. Gosh, quite a few turned up. Yes. Do you know anything about this? I guess I do. They don't know it, but they're candidates for the chorus you talked to me about. Do you remember? They are? Yeah, I picked them out and I told them to come up here today. Since we're having a night problem tonight and we have this afternoon off. Why didn't you let me know? I wasn't sure the guys would come. I, I guess I just didn't think much about it. I hope it didn't surprise you too much. <laughs> well, this is a surprise, but a pleasant one. Bring them over to the reception room of the chapel, Emma Johnson. I'll be there in a moment or two. Okay, fellas, let's go. I hurried back to my office, dug up some choral books from my footlocker, and then went back to the reception room. You all ready now, Chaplain? Yes. For now... Well, we'll... then I guess I'll be running along. Oh, where are you going, Skinner? Well, I got a couple of letters to write. Well, you, you aren't going to desert me, are you? Desert you? Come over here a minute. Confidentially, Skinner, I'm not too sharp on my choral technique. It's been quite a while since I've done any of it. Now, how about you taking charge for me? Me? Oh, gosh, Chaplain. You'd be doing me a big favor. Well, okay, but I won't be able to stay long. Fine. Now, what do we do first? Um, audition them, I suppose. Good. Our fellow, yeah. the reason you're here today is that M and Skinner here wanted to help me form a singing chorus. You men are the ones he selected. How come he picked us, Padre? <laughs> I don't know. But maybe he can tell you. Sure. You guys all have good voices. How do you know? How? It was easy. I just hung around the shower room and heard you sounding off. Oh, no. oh, well, I can't think of a better way. The rest of the afternoon, the air was filled with the sounds of voices, tenors, basses, baritones. And, as I had hoped, Ammon Skinner forgot about going back to his barracks. By the end of the afternoon... They were singing in chorus together. They didn't sound bad considering the short time they rehearsed, and Skinner has promised me he'll develop them into the best singing group in the whole Air Force. If he's going to do that, it will fill out his spare time, and you can be sure he won't be homesick anymore. And now for Saturday. That's the day I always spend writing my Sunday sermon. But on last Saturday, I didn't even have my text chosen yet. And as the day passed, it didn't look as if I was going to get one. 
By four o'clock, I had made a dozen false starts. I was beginning another one when I got a telephone call that made me jump out of my chair, get into my jeep, and hustle over to the base hospital. Oh, come in, Chaplain. Hello, Doctor. How is she? Quite well. Come along. Well, I, I didn't expect anything like this. Yeah, it's quite a surprise to me, too. I was way off and... Oh, here we are. Mrs. Wallace, here's a visitor. Oh, Chaplain Andrews. Well, my dear, how are you? Just fine. And this is the early bird. <laughs> a very fine-looking baby. He looks just like Joe. Yes, doesn't he? By the way, where is Joe? He left just a little while ago, Chaplain. On his mission? Yeah. He was here when it happened. I'm glad. Time's up, Chaplain. Chaplain, I'll never forget what you did for me. Mrs. Wallace, I didn't do anything. It was the good Lord's doing. And yours. <laughs> That evening, I wrote up my Sunday sermon without any trouble, for I had found my text from Mark, chapter 10, verse 15. Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if there are any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Well, I don't have any questions, Chaplain, but uh, I'd like to say something, if I may. Certainly, Mr. Mayor. Well, I'm sure the forum has learned a lot more about the Air Force's activities in the spiritual field than we thought we would, because, well, speaking for myself, before you came here tonight, I thought a chaplain was pretty much a Sunday-only worker. But after hearing about your week, I can only say that you're a Sunday worker, all right, but yours is a week of Sundays. <laughs> young man looking to his future, there's a place today in the Air Force as an aviation cadet. Climb the skies in a powerful jet. Be one of the best trained, best equipped young men in the world, a pilot in your United States Air Force. If you're between 19 and 26 and a half, single, and can meet the other high standards, check at your local Air Force recruiting station and get all the details right away. has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force, and this is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>